Hey guys, it's Belinda. Today I'm going to be showing you some of Revit's best shortcuts and hotkeys. I've read that Revit is an acronym for Revise Instantly. The software is designed to improve your workflow, give you greater control over your projects, and decrease the amount of time spent creating a set of construction drawings. And I think using shortcuts and hotkeys can help you work faster. So let's jump into it. In the first part of this video, we're going to look at the inbuilt Revit shortcuts. The way to access this is to go to View, User Interface, and down here you can see Keyboard Shortcuts, or just type in KS. This brings up a dialog box with all the defined shortcuts already existing in Revit. And you can see Visibility Graphics is VG or VV. If you scroll all the way down, you see the ones that are grayed out. Those can't be changed. Those are hard coded into Revit, like Control S to save a file, Control O to open, etc. But all the ones in black, those can be changed. Okay, let's start modeling a simple building. The first thing we do is draw grid lines. This will be under the architecture tab or just type in GR. I'll draw a grid in the vertical direction and turn on the grid bubble on both sides of the line. Let's copy this grid line over. This is under the Modify tab, or just type in CC for copy. Let's copy this, say, 18 feet to the right. I want to create another grid line also in the vertical direction. I'll do this by mirroring the first grid line. We can do this up here, or just type in MM for pick axis. And I'll pick the grid line too as the axis to mirror it on. Okay, let's draw some grid lines in the horizontal direction. I'm going to rotate the middle grid line. You can see that's up here in the modify or just type in RO as the shortcut. I'm going to copy rotate this so it creates a new grid line, number four. I'll use the shortcut CC again to copy this grid line up 12 feet. And now I want to mirror this number five grid line again, but instead of mirroring it on an axis, I'm going to draw an axis this time. And the shortcut for that is DM. So now grid line number five is mirrored and we have a new grid line number six. And I know the numbers are messed up, but this is just a tutorial. Okay, let's draw some structural columns now. This is under the architectural tab, or we can just type in CL as a shortcut. Let's place this column at the intersection of two grid lines. There's another way to create these structural columns. Once you type in CL, you see some options on the right where it just automatically creates columns at the grid intersection. So let's just select all the grids and hit done. And you can see that the W shaped columns were created at all the grid intersections. Okay, let's create an architectural column to wrap that middle structural column. So I'm going to go back to the architectural tab, go to the column drop down, and create a wrap around that middle structural column. Now let's start modeling some walls. This is also under the architectural tab, or you can just use WA as a shortcut. I'm going to be creating some exterior brick on metal stud walls. I'll start at the intersection of those two columns on the top left. If you hit tab, it actually reverses the orientation of the wall. Now, if you hit escape and you want to continue drawing this wall, just select the wall and hit CS for create similar. That will let you continue drawing the walls. So let's draw one on the bottom and one on the left. Sometimes the lines in your model might be really thick and you're not able to see them very clearly. So if you go up here or if you just type in TL for thin lines, you're able to switch the graphic settings in your view. Say you want to select multiple elements in this model. So the way to do this is to hit the control button and you can see a little plus sign next to the cursor that lets you add to your selection set. If you hit shift, it removes elements from your selection set. You can see a little minus sign next to your cursor. Okay, let's continue drawing some walls inside this uh, building. And I'm gonna draw some interior walls this time. I'll use the shortcut WA again. And in the properties panel, I'll scroll down to interior partitions. I'll just draw two interior walls here. Say you want to move one of these walls. The way to do that is to select your wall and then you'll find the move option under the modify tab or you can just type the shortcut MV. I'm going to move that in a little bit. And next I'm going to start adding some doors. That is also under the architecture tab or you can type in DR as a shortcut for doors. I'll create one exterior door and two interior doors. To add windows to this uh, flow plan, you can either click on that window icon or type in WN 
to add windows. And under the properties panel, you see a lot of different options. The way to reverse your window orientation is to either just hit tab or click on that double sided arrow right there. If you want to create another instance of this window, you can either hit CC to copy it over, or you can select the window and hit CS to create similar. I'm going to go to the 3D view just to see what it looks like so far. We have our walls, windows, a few doors, and an interior column. The next thing we'll do is add some dimension lines to this floor plan. You can either go to the annotate tab and hit aligned, or you can use the shortcut DI. I'll create some on the horizontal grid lines and the vertical grid lines. If you want to change the units of your dimension lines, you can find them under the manage tab project units, or you can use the shortcut UN. That brings up this dialog box and we're going to change it from feet and fractional inches to just decimal feet. You can see how it's changed to just uh, integers right now. Let's undo that. So we're able to see the proper feet and inches. Okay, so now we'll move on to creating flows, which is under the architecture tab. I want the boundary line of the flow to go to the outside of the columns. So I'll use the align tool or AL. I'll select the outside line of the columns and then I'll select the boundary line of the floor. So that moves the line to where I want it to be. Okay, so now we have a rectangular floor, but I want to create a little patio area just outside that main front door. And I'll use the offset tool for that, which is up here under modify, or you can type in the shortcut OF. Let's offset this eight feet. And now we need all the other lines to extend to that offset line. You can use the trim extend tool up here under modify or the shortcut for that is TR. So that extends the bottom boundary line and I'll just draw one on the top. And I'll use the trim extend tool again, or TR to clean up all the other edges of that floor. Another tool you can use is the split element tool, which is under modify. And the shortcut for that is SL. So that splits the boundary line and we can just delete the line that we don't need. So we'll hit the check mark once we're done. Now the floor is white, so you really can't see it. Let's add some pattern to it. The way to do that is to go to visibility and graphic overrides in your properties panel, or just type in VV or VG as a shortcut. We'll scroll down to flows and override patterns. We'll change the pattern from solid fill to concrete, and we'll also change the color to light gray. So that lets us see the floor a little better. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to open up the North elevation as well as the 3D view. And you can see all views are tabbed over there. The way to change this to a tile view is to go to view tile views or type in WT. If you want to switch back to the tab view, just type in TW. Now say you're really zoomed out and you want to zoom all the windows back in place. You can type in ZA and that zooms all the views to the extents. If you want to zoom into just one view, you can type in ZR for zoom region and the other views aren't affected. Sometimes your property panel on the left might disappear. If you want to get that back, you go to view user interface and you can see properties right there, or you can use the shortcut PP. Now another shortcut that is pretty useful is creating new levels. And that's under the architecture tab and level under datum, or you can use the shortcut LL. And here I'll create a new level above level two. Let's go back to our flow plan and add some components to it. You can do this under the annotate tab or use the shortcut CM. So I'll create one instance of the sofa. If we want to create multiple instances in an array, we can use the shortcut AR. So I'll create three instances of the sofa next to each other. And you can see that they're linked. To edit one instance of the sofa in this group, we'll use the shortcut EG. And to ungroup this sofa, we're going to use the shortcut UG. So that only ungroups that one sofa. Let's ungroup the other sofa as well. Now, if you want any of these components to stay in place and not move around, you can pin it using the shortcut PN. And if you want to unpin it, you can use the shortcut UP. That lets you move that element around again. Next thing we're going to do is create some rooms. This is available under the architecture tab, or you can use the shortcut RM. 
we'll create two rooms. If you happen to delete your room tag, you can create a new one under the annotate tab or you can use the shortcut RT for insert room tag. Next, we're going to play around with uh, visibility of some of these elements. If you type in HI, you're able to isolate that one element temporarily. And then you can use the shortcut HR to reset the temporary hide or isolate. If you use the shortcut HC, you're hiding that category temporarily and then reset it with HR again. If you want to hide a particular element but not temporarily, you can use the shortcut EH for hide in view. And then when you want to turn back on, just click on that little light bulb at the bottom and that lets you see all the hidden elements. And then hit the light bulb again to return to your regular view. So let's play around with the view settings in this 3D view. Right now you can see it's shaded and if you want to change it to anything else, the options are down below or you can use different shortcuts. For example, WF switches it to a wireframe view, SD switches it to a shaded with edges, HL switches it to a hidden line. Okay, let's go back to our plan view and create a roof. You can do that under the architecture tab and select level two as the base. I'll draw an outline to the edges of the wall and then offset this outline by using the shortcut OF. I'll offset this one foot to the outside. And if I hit tab, I'm able to select all the lines at the same time. Let's change the pitch or the slope of this roof. You can do that on the properties panel. Change that from a nine by 12 to a four by 12. Okay, here's what we have so far. We have our exterior wall. You can see a door and some windows. We have a floor slab and a roof. Let's paint this roof. And the shortcut to access the paint tool is PT. Let's just select a yellow orange color for now and start painting all sides of this roof. And I know it's kind of ugly, but we're just learning how to use shortcuts in this tutorial. All right, so those are um, some of the inbuilt shortcuts that I wanted to show y'all. Let's move on to modifying existing shortcuts. One of the shortcuts I seem to use every day is align or AL, but A and L are on opposite sides of the keyboard and it's not the best shortcut. So let's modify it. We'll change it from AL to AS. Another shortcut I like to change is the align dimension shortcut. We can change that from DI to DD, or we can just add another shortcut to it. CO for copy is another inconvenient shortcut because it's again on opposite sides of the keyboard. We can change that to CC. And that's going to be a little easier to use. So we just copy this chair down. Okay, you can continue modifying the shortcuts that you'd like, but I'd advise you to only modify it on a computer that you use. If you're sharing computers with someone else, it could be a little inconvenient. Now we're at the third part of this tutorial where we're gonna create our own shortcuts. One that I really like is creating a default 3D view shortcut. Let's bring up our keyboard shortcuts dialog box by typing KS, look for the default 3D view and create a new shortcut called 3.3. Now, if you hit that shortcut 3.3, a 3D view opens up. Another shortcut you could create is activating and deactivating views. Instead of double clicking within the view and then double clicking outside to deactivate it, let's just make shortcuts for it. So under our keyboard shortcuts, we'll look up activate and we'll create a shortcut called AA but you can see that's already taken. So let's use the shortcut AV. And let's create a shortcut for deactivate view. We'll call that DV. So that's a little easier than clicking outside the view, especially when you're dealing with really large views. Another useful shortcut that you could create is one to access all these links. Let's go to our keyboard shortcuts and type in manage links. And we'll create a new shortcut, call it ML. So that's a faster way to bring up this manage links dialog box. Another useful shortcut is selecting all instances either in view or in the entire project. I seem to use that a lot as well. So let's open our keyboard shortcuts again and look for select all instances. For select all instances visible in view, I'll create a shortcut called SAV. For instances in the entire project, I'll say SAS. 
Now, if I select a single sofa and I type in SAV or SAS, it automatically selects all other instances of that chair. There's a button up here to close all inactive views, but let's create a shortcut for that. We'll call it CCC so it doesn't conflict with anything else. Now, you don't have to use just alphabets for your shortcuts. You can use function keys as well. For example, if you want to create a shortcut to toggle the project browser on and off, you can use a shortcut, say, function 4. Now, if you look at the project browser on the left, every time I type function 4, it turns it off and then turns it back on. Now, finally, creating a shortcut to export your current view to CAD could be useful. Let's create a shortcut called exc. Now, when we type in that shortcut, this export to DWG dialog box pops up. And that's it. Leave me a comment below if you think I've missed out on any important shortcuts. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching. Thank you.